Good evening, folks. Welcome back to Serendipity Forge. Uh, got a little video up today on making a slot punch. Uh, the slot punch is made from a piece of old car axle. Now, car axles, springs, things like that, sometimes are good steel. Sometimes, especially with springs, you don't know if you're going to have a stress fracture that you won't find until you're done forging. But I found that axles are usually really good steel for tooling. They won't make a blade, but they're great for tooling. They're usually a 4140 or an equivalent. And um, it's really tough stuff. It's great for punches, great for um, like the slot punch I made today, great for round hole punches, great for things like that. Not so good for anything you want to do fine cutting with. It's just not usually going to hold up for that. Um, my old hardy cutter that you see me use in several of my videos that's actually made from an old piece of car axle too, and it's held up just fine. I'm sure there are probably better things out there, and I've had to resharpen it fairly often, but it, for the most part, it's held up just fine for the past uh, probably four years since I made that, and I really can't complain. But anyway, um, got a little job coming up. I needed the slot punch, so I made it. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, um, Give us a like, subscribe, leave us a comment in the comments section. Hit the bell so you get notifications. We really love to hear from you. Uh, and you can see my Kong shirt. I am definitely a fan of the, the monster movies. I'm really looking forward to the Godzilla vs. Kong movie that's coming out in, out in a couple months. I hate the current COVID situation, having the, the, uh, the um, theaters messed up hopefully we'll get that resolved because despite the shirt i want to see the big lizard kick the big monkeys behind in anyway hope you enjoy the video god bless you have a great night so here's our starting stock already warming up it's just an old piece of car axle i've got it welded on a little piece of square stock to provide a handle so i don't have to fool with tongs and we'll get her warm and see what we can do. We're going to start out at the power hammer. And we'll start out just by drawing a four-sided point on this axle. Got a really good heat. Again, the camera is miserable at showing you the real colors, but this is a really good heat. And I'm taking my time working the stock out. Since I'm starting at the back and tapering outward, and the stock is heated really good through and through, I don't have to worry about um, deforming the very end of the stock very much. Just working it out, keeping it square. Now, mind you, all this could be done by hand hammer, but I've got other things to do and I don't have time. And again, still just working it out, keeping it square, keeping it flat. Going to do the biggest part of the heavy moving of the metal here on the hammer. I want a long slot punch. I'm not quite sure at this point whether I want it to be handheld or I want to put a handle on it. So I'm just working my stock out pretty long. All right, I'm pretty much where I want to be. And no, my hammer's not quite that fast. I've been running this video fast forward for the sake of time. I'll slow it back down to real time for the next operation. And now we're going to just cut it off. I'm using my hack under the power hammer. I'm only cutting halfway through on each side.
don't want to cut all the way through and um, scar up the f face of my hammer with the hack. So I've cut almost all the way through, now we'll just wring it off. There we go. Ready to move on to the next. We're gonna finish this off with the anvil. Just gonna set it down a little bit, work on the profile there on the horn, round it a little. Still not sure whether I wanna put a handle on this or just leave it handheld. I think I'll just weld a handle on it and we'll see how that works. And if it doesn't work, I can always cut the handle off later. That's right, I'm gonna weld a handle on. I know that's not traditional, but hey, I like what works. And yes, I'm playing the video on double speed because if I could hammer that that fast, I wouldn't even need a power hammer. Just dressing the edges up. Most of the work was actually done on the hammer, but that needs to be absolutely smooth for a slitting chisel. The business end needs to be absolutely smooth. It needs a nice smooth taper. Or slot punch, not slitting chisel, excuse me. Needs a nice smooth taper. So there's nothing to hang up as it slides through the steel you're punching. Eh, getting pretty close. Not bad. One more time. Just dress a little more and finish it up. Just light blows, just planishing. Yep, I think that'll do. Now I'll set my ammo box full of oil up here and we'll preheat the oil. Put a railroad spike in the fire and get it hot. Put it in there to preheat the oil. I keep my oil in an ammo box because um, I used to keep it in an open container and a possum kept coming in the forge and drinking my quench oil and making a mess. So just drop that railroad spike in there to warm things up. And I'll take my slitting chisel in the shed and polish it. There we go. Nicely polished. Needs to be nice and smooth so you can slit the steel or punch the steel and it'll slide through without anything to grab or bind. Throw it in the fire and warm it up. You hear a clicking sound in the background of this voiceover. It's my old dog. She's aggravating me right now. There we go, ready to go. In the oil, quench it off. Anytime you're quenching something, you gotta keep it moving in the oil. And if you bring what you're quenching out and you get a big fireball like on that certain TV series used to have, well, you didn't leave it in the oil long enough and it's not gonna be hard. There we go. Yep, just right. Now I'm not gonna bother tempering this because it's gonna be going through hot steel and it'll catch temper good enough as it's used. Now, just cut a piece of quarter by one Sort of cut it to match the contours of the uh, slot punch. Yep, I'm going to go welder up. I could have been more traditional and wrapped a piece of round stock around it or any number of ways I could have done things more traditionally, but I didn't. I chose to do it the non-traditional way.
And there we are, all welded up. Nothing fancy, but functional. And I think I'll try it out. Got a little piece of 3-8 square stock and we'll punch it. Get it hot. Yep, it's gonna work fine, I think. Got our little piece of square stock. And I'm just gonna try and mark both sides. Just a tap or so there. And roll the stock over and mark the other side. I'm sure I could punch all the way through, but I don't really want to. And drop it in the floor. Probably should have put my hold fast in the anvil, but I didn't. I need to make a new one. Cool the punch. You got to cool, cool your punch off. Always keep it cool. So, let's go at it again. This side. I'm being gentle with this. I'm not really familiar with the tool I've made yet, so I'm taking it easy. A couple of taps. Yep, that slug is almost ready to come out. Just wants a little more. Slug's actually sheared off. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to go over the hardy and just tap it the rest of the way out. There we go. Works like a charm. Good stuff. 